What's up, Barefoot Nation? Today, I'm gonna be showcasing all of the planters on the patio. Let's go! So I'm not really sure why I haven't done patio planter tours in the past because I've always had pots on the patio and um, I've always found them to be pretty attractive, but I've never really spotlighted them. Uh, in any case, uh, most of these were planted up in May with a few exceptions being planted a few weeks ago. But uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's get into it. I'm super happy with how the patio planters have turned out. None of these plants along the wall are in the ground. They're all in pots, uh, which is kind of a travesty because this is the south wall of the house. And uh, when this patio got put in, we had an opportunity to do a little planting bed, which planting in the ground is definitely better than putting stuff in pots because you have the heat from the earth itself to enhance the microclimate and keep the roots just a little bit warmer. So as you can tell, I'm going for a tropical theme in my backyard. And I live in zone 6A. Uh, I'm super happy with how this um, arrangement has turned out. I have a lady palm in the background, which is a beautiful shade loving uh, tropical or really subtropical palm. I believe that they're hardy to zone eight. So they are tolerant of uh, frost every now and again but it just because of how slow growing they are, it's not something I would recommend you give frost on a regular basis. Next to the lady palm, I have a Fatsia spider's web. And uh, as you can see, this plant is not quite as um, colorful as it could be. And the reason for that is it's in too much shade for variegation. Uh, in some cases, variegation means that they need a little bit more sun uh, but the leaves are nice and big still, so I'm actually happy with how that's turning out because Fatsia still has a really nice texture to it. And then, of course, what caught all of our eyes from the start was this beautiful pot of Impatience. Believe it or not, I actually just planted this a few weeks ago. Uh, there was a pretty sorry-looking hanging basket that I didn't trim, and it, and it was growing in too much shade. Uh, and uh, I opted to plant impatience exclusively because one of my local nurseries still had a bunch of impatient flats and so they were pretty heavily discounted and so I picked up a few of these flats just to spruce up the garden a little bit and so this pot is actually really packed with impatience. If this was planted in May I probably wouldn't have packed it so much just because if it was packed this much in spring you'd be watering a lot this time of year but because it's planted so late, you can kind of get away with it a little bit. And then more. I picked up a few wax begonias just kind to, of to highlight the, the planter at night and also just to give it a little bit of extra light and kind of a shadier area. But I love how this pot turned out. Forgot to mention too, I have a Enjoy Pothos, I believe. There's like a bunch actually. I don't know if it's Enjoy. There's one that's like pearl something or other that looks very similar. Moving along this way, I've got an awesome tropical mix. Um, the palm is a Christmas palm, otherwise known as Adonidia marillii. And uh, this has been in the pot for too long. You can see that any of you guys who live in the tropics or in Florida are gonna look at this palm and say, what an anemic little thing. Well, <laughs> I live in zone six, and so this thing has to come in for the winter and uh, it lives in a bathroom and is pretty happy over the winter. But as you can see, it, it has shrunk quite a bit. Um, I'm wondering if giving it a lot of fertilizer, just a bunch of nitrogen is going to help it out. The other thing that I did was, um, I the past few years I've planted annuals at the base. And annuals are very, anything that flowers really, but annuals in particular, are very heavy feeders in general and so that could also be part of the issue with why this uh, palm is so anemic. Uh, it still looks good but it is definitely an anemic Christmas palm. Also hasn't helped that the spider mites have done really well this year so there's just a ton of spider mites around and I don't really do anything outside I kind of let the yellow jackets and the other uh, predator animals feed on them. 
Behind the Christmas palm, I have some hardy cast iron plants. Um, cast iron plants are definitely hardy to zone 7, regardless of what certain tags say. But they're, So they're definitely hardy to zone 7, and it's arguable that they're hardy in protected areas of zone 6. Uh, particularly the green one, but these are going to eventually be planted in the ground um, along the north or east side of the house. Uh, even though this is the south side of the house, they are under the palm, which does offer them quite a bit of shade. So and this big, beautiful yellow groove bamboo blocks a lot of the sun from that corner of the garden, that corner of the house, rather. Planter, this is a new plant for me. Um, many of you grow calathea. Believe it or not, this is also a calathea. This is, um, this is known as cigar plant, or calathea lutea a new plant for me and just like any other prayer plant its leaves do tightly uh, fold up at night when it gets enough light it is surprisingly a calathea that likes to have a little bit more direct sun you know many of us have calathea out if you have calatheas outdoors for the summer which I highly recommend um, we it's usually recommended to put them in morning sun just a couple hours of morning sun but a lot of shade well, this guy has been not doing so hot. You can see, while I had it in shade, full of spider mites and dying back. I also probably was keeping it too dry at that stage, but since I've put it in more sun, you can see that the size of the leaves have increased and it's doing very well. It is in a large blue planter with potato vine and impatiens. Um, and it was kind of the intention was to have like a mixed calathea planter, but the impatience really took off and there is there is a little tiny, whoops. And under all these spider webs, there is, as you can see, a little calathea lancifolia. I didn't notice all those spider webs. But I'm thinking it's probably a good thing just from like a pest control standpoint, because spiders, just like yellow jackets, are also uh, predators. Probably also works out very nicely in that um, rattlesnake plants favor that the impatiens are shading it because they tend to like deeper shade. So this is another rather full container because as you can see right here, I have a calathea orbifolia in this pot as well. Uh, and I was kind of hoping orbifolia would be keeping up with the, with the, I almost said alocasia lutea, with the calathea lutea uh, but it hasn't, and uh, that's fine. Calathea lutea is spectacular enough that I'm fine with that being the focal point and other plants being the support. And just something for context, in case you think Calathea lutea is kind of boring, uh, I grow a lot of plants that are green and kind of jungly just to make this garden feel less like a zone 6 and more like, I don't know, somewhere warmer. So that's kind of my context as far as why I love this Calathea so much. Moving along this way, I have a beautiful Trachycarpus bulgaria. So this is a Trachycarpus that's probably one of the more cold tolerant ones. Um, I am unsure if I plant this in the ground or not, but regardless, it doesn't matter because I'm not going to plant any of these tropicals like the cast irons or any of these hardy palms that I have in the ground until I have my own house. You can see that uh, it had there was a cold snap early in the season and so whatever was exposed sticking out of the plant got um, it didn't die it actually just got a weird line like right where the the right where the spear was sticking out. Let me show you. So this is a spear of a trachycarpus and so Basically what happened during that cold spell was whatever was sticking out of the plant as you see here with that uh, got this weird brown line right there and then it froze and then it kind of just burned off and left me with this interesting kind of diseased looking stub. But in fact that's cold damage. And as you can see it's grown pretty well since then but uh, just kind of an interesting little factoid. I got this from Plant Delights Nursery. 
a few years ago and it was in a three inch pot. Right here I have a native plant. This is Clethra Vanilla Spice, otherwise known as Vanilla Spice Summer Sweet. And um, I mainly have this plant on the patio for fragrance. Even though it's not heavily blossoming, you can see right here they do produce uh, in the ground a rather large bottle brush type uh, blossom and um, just tremendously fragrant. All of you lucky people down south who can grow gardenias with their wonderful fragrance, this is kind of a northern, kind of a cold hardy shrub that does well and gives us that similar kind of fragrance. But yeah, vanilla spice will mature around four to five feet tall and if you guys are familiar with ruby spice clethra, then it's literally just a white form of that. Again, Clethra is a, a plant that's native to the eastern half, at least, of uh, the United States, and it draws in tremendous amounts of pollinators once when it's in full flower. So a good use for this plant could be somewhere facing west, or where it gets some prevailing wind, just so that it carries that fragrance over, but the bees are far away from like a seating area or something. Only if you're afraid of bees. It's like honeybees and bumblebees and some of the less aggressive wasps so you know they're not gonna they shouldn't sting you unless you provoke them <laughs> right here I have another windmill palm uh, this is a new plant this plant itself I just got in early spring or fall I, I haven't had this for too long I bought it as a larger plant and obviously bigger plants you're gonna pay more for but um, I think it's worth it it's nice to get, it's nice to have some more established plants in the garden. And uh, again, as far as windmills go, this might end up in the ground with a cold frame, otherwise known as an unheated greenhouse around this plant. Um, at the base, I have a Tenanthe liberziana. And I also have some snapdragons and just a couple extra impatiens that I had that I stuck in the planter just to give it some extra color. And you can't see it from this angle, but from here you can see that one of the yellow snapdragons are, are blooming. So when they were kind of corresponding, it was really pretty. It still is really pretty because now the tenanthe has really started to get a good root hold and put up some bigger leaves. Echoing the Tenanthe that you just saw, I have a beautiful Alpinia Zerumbit variegata. <laughs> and in English, that just basically means variegated shell ginger. Uh, this is a plant that is hardy somewhat, but is best in kind of subtropical areas where it can be allowed to grow into a big massive bush. I let this plant get some frost two years ago and it has regrown very nicely but yeah I really think especially if you want to see their flowers you should kind of grow this plant as more of a tropical another thing you'll notice too is that this Alpinia gets good dappled light and that's going to give you a little bit of variegation um, they can take direct Sun in the morning but um, they don't want to have generally speaking full Sun Although I have seen these in the video that Aquascape put out of their Colombian water feature at the uh, mall. Uh, and they're clearly planted in full sun over there and doing just fine. So uh, generally speaking, these plants want shade, but um, you know, plants are very adaptable and you know, it's I guess just the right environment over there. And speaking of that Colombian water feature video, it's I kind of got a little bit of inspiration from that with the fan palms and the gingers underneath. This spectacular palm right here is a Chinese fan palm. And so Chinese fan palms are kind of another subtropical type palm. If they're grown in zone 8B and up, they can eventually grow into a pretty majestic tree. But in uh, zone 7 down to probably zone 6b they can actually be treated as a perennial so they're not going to grow into a palm tree but they're going to maintain kind of a bush like form kind of like you see here except uh, any palm that gets significant dieback is probably not going to have such long petioles as you see here 
And even since I've had this palm, what's been happening is like this is a new frond here or a couple new fronds and the petioles are much shorter. Really neat palm. And I placed it in such a almost obnoxious location just because just because I wanted a strong focal point in the middle of the patio and I wanted people to enjoy this beautiful plant and, and actually sit under its canopy because it is big enough that you can do that. And then immediately to its, to its right as kind of an underplanting and in some relatively deep shade I have a I have a couple calatheas. So I have a uh, relatively old calathea lancifolia. I've had this guy for years. I don't even remember when I bought this. And as you can see, it's had a little bit too much sun at one point, but it's been pretty happy underneath this uh, Chinese fan palm. Behind the calathea lancifolia in the foreground is a newly acquired calathea macoyana. I actually don't know the English name, I'll insert both the Latin name and the English name in a title at the bottom of the screen just so you can see how it's spelled and, and so I can put the English name in. So the reason I like this plant is because it resembles Lancifolia but it actually has a little bit more detail in the leaves. It almost looks like an aquatic plant or some kind of aquarium plant that you would have in a tropical fish tank. So uh, that's why I like Macoyana. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. And I think Macoyana is similar to the Calathea lutea that I showed you earlier in that if it's planted in a big enough container, uh, Macoyana should be able to grow into a relatively large Calathea. And photobombing the last clip was these beautiful beacon impatiens. These are some of the allegedly mildew resistant impatiens um, time will tell and the reason that I talk like that and say that it's allegedly resistant is that when you get to realize with viruses and mildews and all that all these sorts of uh, pests and diseases these these diseases are alive too and they want to propagate themselves just like the plants so you know when you breed a quote-unquote resistant variety of plant not to say not to do it because you know it's it's worth the time but Breeders just have to realize that these diseases are moving and alive too and when you breed a resistant impatient You're gonna chances are in a few years have to keep updating that impatient because Oh shit, do you guys see that? Holy ADD. Look that wasp just killed a spider Look at that Anyway <laughs> Which as far as biology is concerned is why genetic diversity is important is because having a wide gene pool is actually going to help plants and animals survive various uh, pathogens and diseases. And the impatiens are kind of eating it a little bit but you can also see that there is a tricolor stromanthi planted in this container. So since I've stepped back a few Feet, you can see this container here in its full glory. So the centerpiece in this container is actually a hardy plant. It's Iris versicolor purple flame, which is a native plant. It's interesting because it has beautiful purple new growth, which obviously, as you can see, greens out as the summer goes on. And at the base, I have one Wojo's gem, Vinca. I have this petunia here, which I'm going to include a subtitle, and then I have two night sky petunias kind of flanking the, the, the other magenta one. Shifting down a little bit here, I have a island breeze hosta in the shadiest little corner underneath my beautiful hardy elephant ears, but we're going to be focused on containers in this video. And in this nice royal blue container, I have another pretty simple design with a Canna Australia and also another Marguerite sweet potato vine with just some uh, beacon pink impatience and that's that so just a you know a nice little highlight just a nice little accent for the garden kind of playing off that impatient there underneath the uh, colocasia and hardy bananas and then these containers here are another beautiful set of pots uh, with some rather unique plants. 
Um, obviously, what's very eye-catching here are the beak and pink impatiens. And then over here, I have more impatiens in the ground to kind of highlight the container. But um, the focal points in this pot just kind of look like grass right now. But it's actually a Mexican shell flower, otherwise known as Tigridia pavonia. And you can see... Oh, that's actually a fresh one. Wow. And you can see just how beautiful the flower is. Unfortunately, this one seems to have snapped. But uh, beautiful flower when, when they're upright. Uh, these are the seed pods. I always let plants go to seed. Or I shouldn't say always, but I usually let plants like this go to seed and then try to collect it and grow it. Because of the focal points in this pot, I'm going to bring it in before frost so the impatience likely will survive just die back to the ground or reseed in the pot which t happens occasionally uh, and this is a really beautiful plant this is a variegated heliconia siticorum so a variegated parrot's beak heliconia this is um hot lava which i actually got from urban tropicals for quite a pretty penny this was not a cheap plant uh, so it's nice to see it, you know, relatively happy. It has grown some since I've planted it, but uh, even though it's been a relatively hot and tropical summer, they the heliconia just doesn't grow too well up here in northern climates. And as many of you guys do, I, this planter, this pot has seen many iterations of plantings in it. So in a previous design, I had a calla lily in the center and it actually sent up a pup or a little runner somehow and that's there and it was cool so I left it. The only thing I don't know is what do you guys think this is? I've been dealing with mosaic virus in the garden from uh, unscrupulous. kind of hoping this isn't mosaic but in case it is what do you guys think? But yeah this is a really nice accent and then I forgot just a simple variegated lily turf in a pot. We have a few more containers on this patio which is one of the reasons that my zone 6 garden can look so tropical is because all these palms and calathea and tropical plants are in containers or at least the vast majority of them. So this little patio here is what I call the jungle patio because the idea here with this separate little area is that even though it's close to the house, I wanted it to feel as though you're off in some tropical oasis that's far away, even though in reality you have a hardy banana and a bamboo separating it. But now I'm getting into more of a garden tour rather than highlighting the pots. But so basically the concept is simple. I just have two palms flanking the, the bench, but I have two different palms. This is a Mayan palm, otherwise known as Camadoria pupuriana. And so Mayan palms are beautiful, large Camadoria. So this is the same genus as parlor palm, cat palm. So even though it's got a really big kind of open form to it, it likes shade just like the parlor palm and the cat palm, which is really nice. Although I do think they are adaptable to growing in sun. But as you can see from some of these fronds, they actually got sunburnt from when they were moved out in the spring. So it's not necessarily a terribly fast growing palm in every climate, but it is nonetheless beautiful and, uh, and I love it. At the base you can see I have a pothos that's variegated and I forgot the name of the plant. I think it might have been a Monjula cutting, but I don't remember. I've got a Monstera adansonii and also a Calathea rufibara. I think Calathea rufibara is known as the velvet Calathea in English, but don't hold me to that because I'm not sure. I've had this areca palm for years. So basically at the, at the base of the areca, I just have a bunch of impatiens that I planted rather close together so that they all, all the colors kind of rambled together. But it is that time of the year, as you can see, that they should get kind of a light pruning. I don't like to cut back impatience too hard too late in the season just because they don't seem to 
respond too well to that. And I also have, a few years back, I planted caladiums in this planter. Um, but most of them didn't make it because the areca palm stays rather dry in the house during the winter. And calathea, even though they can go dormant, uh, for whatever reason, they didn't survive in that environment. But I do want to try them in the future. And as you can see too with the areca palm, never mind how spectacular the hardy bananas are. Actually, no. Go ahead and enjoy them because they're amazing. <laughs> hardy bananas are just incredible plants. This is actually a sunburn in plants that's relatively bad. Luckily for this palm, it won't get skin cancer as a result of being burned repeatedly. All right, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. Drop a comment down below what you guys are growing in your containers and in your garden in general. I'm curious to hear. Also, if you like this video, be sure to drop it a big ol' thumbs up. And if you want to see more content just like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and tap the bell. That's not a bell, that's a tiki torch. Nevertheless, thanks for watching and I can't wait to see you on the next one. Right here I have a fronds and any holy bloopers, Batman. How have you gotten along this, this long weed?